Hey YouTubers and Instagrammers and everybody else following me. So today I finally got my package from the Swedish Customs. They've been holding it ransom for a month now. And this is the gift I got uh, for winning King Arms customizing competition with my gun Dracaris. If you... I think you remember this, uh, if you are following me. So this is the gun that won me. This gun! And I haven't even opened the package yet. I wanted to do a, a real unboxing! And I mean, check it out. It's a Bro Airsoft! Bro! Official King Arms. Licensed. Let's see if I turn these off. If, if it's better. Let's not have the glare. Yeah. There we go. A little bit better. Black rain. Ordnance. Let it rain. Bro, airsoft. Black Rain Ordnance, Bro Airsoft, oh yeah! So let's see what is in it. How does this look? Bro! BlackRainOrdnance.com and I must admit, some of you might know what Black Rain Ordnance is. I actually don't have a clue what Black Rain Ordnance is. Is it some kind of famous weapons manufacturer, real steel? It seems like it when I searched on it a little bit. They seem like they are some kind of real steel gun makers from over the puddle from Sweden. And officially they have apparently done an airsoft also. I have no idea, I might be talking out of my ass. Feel free to correct me. This is a quite exciting uh, discovery trip for me. Yeah! A white gun! I Oh, okay. Come on, flex, can you? Here we go. The big reveal, I guess. Boom, boom, boom. So I have it in. Oh, this is really good made. Oh, wow. So I have a magazine. Just like the one with Dracaris, it says T Mag 30, and I'm guessing <laughs> this time it is a high cap. Last time I got a real mid cap, this time I got a high cap. So that T Mag 30 is just a fake real steel marking. Just another high cap crap. Won't be using that much. But it looks nice. The texture is actually really awesome. The plastic build is awesome. So I guess this also is some kind of nylon polymer plastic stuff some sort. Has a really nice feel to it, I must admit that. Go away little foam bit into the trash can. Bye bye! And I have, what is this? Is this? Ooh, they are extra grips for the um, handle. What the heck? Blue stuff. Cool. Oh, the crispness of that selector switch, dudes. And dudettes. Oh, wow. Hmm. First, in first impression. Mm, so these are extra grips uh, or backs or whatever the name is to exchange that one if you want it slimmer or if you want it fatter. I have quite large hands, so I might want to have it a bit larger. And then also I have the uh, magazine plate. I won't... It goes like this. Boom. K 
King Arms M4 TWS Magazine Base Pad for King Arms TVs and compatible magazines and I got it in dark blue cool still matches the blue there though mm -hmm. let's try this sucker out then damn it's long Mm -hmm. Let's put this there, and I'll forget about where it ended up. So what does this say then? Dark blue. It is factory made so far for 111 to 115 meters per second, so it's not recommended or allowed for CQB zero meters distance shooting it's and the length of it is not recommended for a cqb either it's it's much better for a forest this is definitely a forest gun straight off the bat definitely oh shit yeah so it's full metal i like guns with some weight in and this has all the weight wow okay and this I do like, actual nice foam, not that uh, pearl foam as we call it in Sweden, frigolit, that beads off this little static fucking white stuff everywhere that's impossible to even vacuum up. Good, good going. King arms, those details do much actually. Oh, wow, I have to weigh this beauty later. <laughs> Mod Fallout 15, okay. What's this little thing I'm a jig for? I've never seen that before on a gun. That's the one holding the sprint for the gearbox when you disassemble it, but what does it do in this little box? Hmm. Everything is full metal. I can't, this doesn't seem to be plastic, it seems to be metal also. It, it can be wrong, the texture of it is really nice. It's epoxy or lacquered, or maybe full color, molded. Yeah, I don't have the fingers for this. Come on, baby. Really? There we go, pushing from the other side helped. I haven't had this kind of stock before so I don't know how to do it more correctly but it helped me pushing from the other side instead yeah you're generic generic nice stock I'm guessing this one is wired for rear battery I have to check that out it's hard to do things with one hand, just so you know. Oh my god. Charging handle. Also blue. Also markings on it. Wow. Foregrip. <laughs> oh, that's a touch I like. The bolt, fake bolt, has black rain markings on it. And oh, the inside. Come on, work with me here. Go away then.
the same here. That little weird. Actually, no manual. Hmm. Nope, no manual describing what that is for. Well, feel free to tell me, YouTubers, what the devil this is for. I don't actually even know what that would be for in real steel. Is that I also know where it is for? The triggers. Nice, I guess. A little bit enlarged here also. Trigger guard. Not changeable as normal. M force used usually is. Even this. This is also steel or aluminium or something. Let's see where I can. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's take the pink scissors. Yeah. That's plastic. That's about the only thing that's plastic here. Seems like even that is metal. So yeah, I can truly say that this is a full metal gun. And this really nice flash suppressor here. Ooh! See the markings here. Mm -hmm. A little bit different grip bottom that I'm used to see. Nice. This is my Bro Airsoft. built in MOSFET it said and I know with my Dracarys the little uh, M4 striker CQB style that King Arms had us uh, doing the competition on that MOSFET or trigger MOSFET or uh, ASCU or whatever uh, I haven't found any way to be programmed so it's one of the simplest MOSFETs I would guess but the response in that gun is amazing and I'm guessing it will be in this one too. Quick change spring system. I didn't think about that. That would be interesting. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's see where I can look. So if this is quick change, does this is this everything all I have to do? Let's take that one. Mm. Mm. One of those sprints, pins that doesn't come out. Smart. Let's see if this baby folds then. Or if I... No. No, it doesn't fold at least. Not like the ICS units. Let's do the other pin too then. Oh, okay, that was harder. Why? Once again, guys, I am not used to working with M4s, so you might be laughing your ass off right now. And you know what? I give you that. You're allowed to laugh at me. That's why you like watching my videos. It's not because I'm the most epic player out there there is. It's because I'm one of those you can laugh at or preferably laugh with, I hope. But you're okay. It's okay to laugh at me. I'm used to it. Dust cover was locking it in place, stupid. Well, of course, that's another one I didn't think of. If it's quick change, yeah, well, that's not 
true quick change this is semi quick change I need to remove the whole stock here stock tube and everything to be truly quick change in my opinion Ugh, Tamiya contacts I really like the T-plug initiative that's uh, rolling around the airsoft world now why the hell do we work with T with Tamiya plugs especially even mini Tamiya what the fuck dudes Put this little bit back together and with one hand. Yeah, good work, lads. This is like Electro Boom's channel when he does everything wrong. The only thing is, he does it wrong on purpose. I do it wrong because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> That snapped back in with a really nice click. Let's see this one do it too. Oh, that was nice. And then let's see. I won't have any kind of. Yep, uh, yep, that's the normal. Phillips or cross you can't see it in there of course but I see it in my lighting it's the normal normal screw I'm guessing <clears throat> longer screw get that off and you can access the uh, quick change so let's do that right now this extra long spare bit have helped me so much in working with these guns working with m4s when ordinary ordinary screwdrivers can't go that far but now you can Yeah, this is really easy to do with one hand. Good job, Roger. There, got it connected. Let's start unscrewing then. How much more? This is amazing. Oh, there's the little MOSFET. Yeah, the normal. Normal quick change. So why not try it? Let's take the big one. There's the threads. There's the threads. Bay bayonet catch. Isn't it though? I have to have this out of the way too. There we go. Now I can quick change it. So you have to remove this little piece too. Oh yeah, it's it's metal. Nice. And fold that out of the way. And then you can access this bit again. Great success. 
Mm, nice. So for all that work I will now just reassemble this. So the next sequence will be me putting it on some scales and see what the heck this little beast weighs. That will be interesting. See you soon guys. You can see that. There's actually a groove there where you fit the bayonet fittings. And you slide it out. That was pretty clever. So now I am at our shooting range at Hippie City in uh, Sweden and I will try and see how this little sweet gun handles out at our shooting range. I will chrono it and I will uh, see what we can do with the hop up also. We have a target range here of up to 55 meters. I don't know if that's really visible, the little little dot over there, that's 55 meters. So let's see here what we can do. First of all, I will load the battery. Now I have a little problem here that's not fair against uh, the gun itself, but since the gun comes with a mini Tamiya, I have to use an adapter because all guns I use at home already have been deansed or T-plugged. So I have to use a little adapter and what that means is that even though the uh, battery itself, a 1.4, 7.4 uh, voltage, 1.4 uh, milliamps, it fits perfectly in here and I would guess that it would be no problem if I have exchanged that to deans but for now I will have to suffice with doing it like this which means that I can't fully collapse the stock but that doesn't really matter to me because I'm a tall guy so I all, always use when I shoot a gun I almost always have it at the outmost position so for me that's okay to have it like this I could play a full day with it as it is this is as far as I can collapse it right now with all the um, cableage being behind there. That's okay for me. Let's see then. Flip up the sights. And I have... Oh, come on. Let it rain. I have loaded the high cap with G&G's Pink bullets, of course. I mean, I am call sign rainbow. What else would you expect? Uh, this is 0 0.20 grain or grams or whatever you want to call it. 0 0.20 and that's only because I will chrono it at 0 0.20 to be a more honest, uh, to see how it shoots better. 
I will in all honesty uh, go over to 0.28 but for now I will see how it reacts with 0.20 and chrono it it says as I said here on the label it says 111 to 115 we'll see where we are with that it's now confirmed it's now confirmed that I have hop up on its lowest so I will have the highest velocity Well, it's changed about two to three meters per second, so it's not exactly airtight, but it actually uh, produces exactly this the speed it says. Good. Let's now uh, actually... This is uh, the response, by the way, with a 7.4 milliamp battery. Hmm, okay, this is pretty neat, I... let's not turn you guys over, I just discovered something that I have not seen on other uh, AEGs so far, but this is among the most high level gun I've ever handled so far without it being a, a PTV, the normal AEG function with accessing the hop up. But look at this, the fake bolt stays back so I can handle the hop up freely uh, and then the bolt catch release or this is the forward assist something something uh, what I, from what I know about M-Force. As I said I don't like M-Force basically. So I have no idea what all the things does in real steel, but I do know that this is some kind of bolt forward assist something a bad jig. And this obviously is the bolt release. That function I did like a um, very deal, very big deal. Hmm, okay. Let's continue setting the hop up then. Judging so far from how this gun shoots with 0 0.20 gram I'm actually almost tagging 55 meters with 0 0.20 Woo, There came the hop up overspin <laughs> That's 55 meters now, with a stock gun, nothing changed. 30 meters. I think I have to fill up on my uh, ammunition soon. I'll try for the uh, 45 meters here. This is with 0 0.20 grams of weight, as I said, among the most wind sensitive ammo we have. That's 55 meters with 0 0.20. Let's uh, recalibrate. Let's recalibrate to 28 weight instead. Can you show me this also? This is a pretty interesting way to open the high cap hatch. Usually it's backwards or a flip up from here, but this is, you have to use your nails. It's spring mounted. 
Why not? Yeah, the lovely turning. I don't like high caps. It's up to each and every one, I guess. And this rattle. Mm, nope. If I give it a full spin until it's fully loaded, it should last the entire amount of balls I have in it right now. Oh, I'm nearing it. There we go. Just a little bit, just a little bit tight here actually. Oh, now it's in. I haven't changed the hop up as you might have noticed. I've left it at the same uh, calibration that I had the uh, 20. 020 grams and it seems like it shoots really nice the 55 meters is a little bit hidden here for me many of you want to hear this so let's do it full out and this is 7.4 lipo that's it folks end of the show This is a nice gun, heavy like I like it, 3 kilos, well built, unbelievably well built, steel, almost everything steel and aluminium and a few plastics, steel and aluminium, all the way through, up to the front. Safety first. Thanks little buddy. Let's see if I can come up with something more to uh, edit in or talk about when I arrive home again. But for now the uh, field test is done. Bring it on home Roger. And we're back home. Um, there's just about one more thing I can talk about with this gun and show you. I guess uh, that's the weighing I found uh, information on the interwebs that this piece will weigh 3080 grams so just just over three kilos and this way I have here the scale goes up to three kilos exactly so let's see how it reacts oh this is heavy Yep, it's over three kilos at least. Uh, this is aluminium, this is steel, or some kind of steel. I think this is steel or aluminium back here as well. So I mean, it, it is a really well built piece. I'll show you how well built it is by expertly putting your the camera here. Dun, dun, dun. I 
I'm no professional YouTube blogger. I don't have a setup and everything. I, I have you on a selfie stick that I have to put up, uh, put somewhere. Okay. This is the build quality of this baby gun. This there's not a creek. This is all metal. It's all put together good. Not a single wobble. Not even creaking if I try to. Bloody brilliant gun. Nice. I don't know what else I can say. I probably missed a lot for you guys that know about these things. Uh, I don't. Ah! Oh my god, you almost fell over. Catch yourself, dudes and dudettes. I did like this feature though. I haven't seen it before, as I said. <laughs> Makes me childishly satisfied. I did like that function. I could play with that all day long. As you see, just a normal, normal hop up. Nothing special about that one at least. Still good though. As you saw on the range, I mean I clipped 55 meters without problem with a simple 0 0.02 grams bullet. Bloody insane. But both the two uh, King Arms guns I've had so far have been so well put together. I really like King Arms, I do, I must admit. Especially since I have a third King Arms gun as well now. I have the uh, Dracarys, my pink M4 that I used to win this gun. That's the one you saw in the beginning of the video. And I now have this one licensed from Black Rain. And I have a third one, but that's a secret project I'm not ready to reveal yet. Mm -hmm. So soon, my friends, soon. But I guess for now, this is about it. So uh, have a nice day and peace out from Call Sign Rainbow. Doo -doo 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 -doo.